Well, hey there, everybody. This is uh, Dan Hughley of Focusrite. I have John DiNicola with me. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing great, Dan. Good to be here. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, uh, we had a lot of fun on our last recording guitar uh, live stream, so here we are. We're back at it to do it again. Uh, John, again, just in case people didn't catch the last one, give us a little bit of your, uh, your background, where you're from, and, and how long you've been playing guitar. Sure, Dan. I uh, grew up in New Jersey, living in New York City right now, so I've been in the area most of my life, um, playing guitar for a good chunk of that time as well, about 15, 16 years or so. So, um, And I actually was into recording at a very early stage of it, too, so I've uh, been, been messing with this stuff for a while. Very cool. <laughs> very cool. Did I lose you there, John? Did I... Um, I, oh, there it is. My, yeah, sound, good. my sound cut out for just a second. I'm sorry about that. The, <laughs> no worries. The, uh, the downfalls of being live. But uh, let's, let's have a little conversation about what we're going to cover here today. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than last time. We're going to have a couple of the same things at the beginning. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of the, uh, the reasons to record yourself and the benefits. Um, we did cover that in the electric guitar uh, live stream, if any of you saw that. Uh, this will be really quick and kind of similar. Uh, the hardware that John's using today, we're going to talk about that, uh, the software that John's using today, um, and then we'll talk about um, some mic placements. I, I, John and I had a good conversation about this, and um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have some, have some fun. It's going to be a lot of uh, John playing and listening back to what he did today. Um, but John, let's, let's talk about this again. We had a, a good chat about this uh, a couple weeks ago, but um, for, in, in your own opinion, what are some of the good uh, reasons to, to record yourself? Yeah, awesome. Um, like I said, I got into recording really early on, but I know a lot of guitar players don't. Um, it, it can be really helpful, even if it's not a matter of you wanting to put out your own music uh, as a, a song or a completed song, which is great. You can do that. Um, but it's also a great practice tool. So, you right. know, you can, <clears throat> even if it's just for yourself, you can record different parts, uh, play it back, listen to where you may be a little bit deficient and, um, and get your practice game up. Um, aside from that, it's a lot of fun to play along with yourself, you know, overdubbing tracks and kind of building arrangements and stuff. And, and you can do that recording nowadays as well. So, yeah. uh, it's kind of a twofold thing. Um, and, and, and that's a lot of fun. Like I said, even if your end goal isn't to release music, um, it can still be a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. It was, my end game always was kind of to create music, but it didn't end up that way for me. Um, but it, it did, uh, recording did become a good, uh, practice tool for me, um, and yeah, you, you just get to be, you know, kind of brag to your family and friends, you know, play things for them and, and show things to them. And, you know, it makes you feel better. But then also, yeah, you can listen back, like you were saying, and uh, um, you can hear any of the mistakes that you might be making um, and then improve yourself. Um, so cool. Uh, very cool. We have some great people joining us from, uh, look at that, from um, from Bolivia and South America. And we have someone from... Uh, wow. Uh, just outside of Glasgow in Scotland. So look at that. We have the international crowd today. Uh, good evening to you um, uh, in, in Glasgow. Uh, I believe, um, uh, I don't know, is Bolivia on the same time as us? I think they're, they're fairly close. They're fairly <laughs> close, I think. Um, but very cool. Uh, John, do you have any quick tips or tricks that you can share uh, before we, uh, we get started with all the fun today? Yeah, sure. Uh, just a couple basic things. Of course, uh, anytime you're recording anything, you want to make sure that the sound that you're the source that you're recording is is, is sounding as good as possible. So, uh, just a couple. The basic thing is, especially on acoustics, it's nice to get some new strings on your guitar. Yeah. Um, maybe not brand new because they'll go out of tune a lot. Um, yeah. But you know, get them. Maybe if you have a session the next day, you know, maybe get them on the night before, let them settle in a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the main thing for me. And then it sounds like common sense, but uh, tuning, tuning, um, it's almost like saving when you record, save early, save often, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, especially when you're overdubbing or if you're going to do a bunch of takes, uh, you really want to make sure they're all exactly in the same tune. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you know, uh, or especially if you want to play along with loops or virtual instruments, it just makes things way easier down the line for sure. Yeah. You know, you could have a perfect take that you have just a note that was just a little bit off. Um, and, uh, oh, hold on one second. Yeah. One note could be a little bit off, but then you do a, a second take and, uh, you know, you could match them up that way if you're in the same tuning, but if you're off just a, a little bit, that's going to make it really difficult without having to bring in software and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I'd say outside of that, I mean, whatever you can do about the room that you're in, of course, helps too. Um, I'm in a 
pretty a little bit of a reverberant room, which you're going to hear a little bit on the recordings. That can be cool. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's not what you're looking for. So, you yeah. know, um, again, if, if sometimes if your sound isn't what you want, think about it from the source and work your way back or, you know, towards recording. And, and maybe you'll find that the problem is way before your microphone or any, you know, or anything else. Yeah. So get those new strings, uh, especially if you're going to be recording. And when you have the new strings, make sure you're constantly tuning. Pretty much every take you want to tune. I know it sounds like a bit of a pain to do that, but uh, you're going to thank yourself in the end uh, in the in the um, editing and mixing process. Um, what what do you got there to 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 play with uh, today, John? What do you have for hardware? Well, well, I'll start with the. Uh, well, I'll tell you about the instrument in a second. But as far as the hardware goes, we have a Scarlet 18 i8. I'm using the 18 i8 because I uh, we need an extra input here for my speaking microphone. But you know, you can re- what we're going to do today. We're really just going to focus on mono techniques, uh, miking in mono, and then a little bit with direct pickups. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, everything we're doing today, you could do with something as small as our Scarlet Solo. Um, you just need a, a microphone input and then a, a quarter inch input for your pickup if your guitar has one. Cool. Um, yeah. So you need um, some microphones, obviously, when you're recording an acoustic. Great. Yeah, good. Of course. So let's get into the, as far as the mic choice goes, um, typically a condenser microphone is where you're going to want to start. Um, as far as large diaphragm versus small diaphragm, it's kind of a, a matter of choice. Depends on um, where you're placing it, in my opinion. Um, we'll get to some of the placements that we're going to go totally. over in a minute, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, different, um, different size diaphragms are good for different parts of the, uh, of the guitar. Totally. Um, and you know, you can, and if you don't have a condenser mic, you know, go ahead and throw on your SM57 or a decent dynamic mic. Uh, that can give you a, a certain kind of result as well. I'm sure it's been heard on lots of records. So, oh, for sure. Um, these rules are all meant to be broken. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the beautiful thing about music is, you know, all of these rules are kind of just they're kind of suggestions. You know, it's a, it's a good place for you to start when you're, when you're working on this stuff. Sure. Um, so, you mentioned you're using the 18i8, which is great, um, but you know something like a Scarlett Solo would be really great too. Um, and uh, the mic that we're going to show in a minute, the mic that you're going to be recording with, is the Studio Bundle mic. That's um, right. So you can get a, a Scarlett Studio Bundle with a microphone, headphones, cables, um, all of that stuff uh, at a very good uh, deal from from Pocus, right? And you, you're all set. You're ready to record guitar. You have a mic input, so you can plug in that microphone. And then if your acoustic guitar has um, uh, a DI pickup on it. You can plug into that as well, um, and we're gonna we're gonna do both of those today. Uh, it just happens that John's using an 18i8 because he needed one more input for uh, his his speaking microphone. We got some loop back from Pro Tools as well, so we're, we're <clears throat> using that as well. But uh, um, I guess is that about it? Should we start getting into it? Yeah. Um, before we do, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the Scarlet Solo. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I talked about the mic and the DI input. Uh, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself there. Um, <laughs> Has the gain halos. Uh, I know, John, you've adjusted your gain, uh, so we're not going to have to go through all of that today. You have everything all lined up, but the gain halos make it super easy. Um, when it's glowing a nice green, that means you have a really good signal coming into it. If it starts getting into yellow or red, that means it's clipping a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll show you that for sure. Uh, when I plug the DI in, we'll set the gain on there. Well, we have a, we have a suggestion from one of our, our viewers. Looks like uh, <laughs> they just want us to get into it, John, so... <laughs> How about let's do that? Do you want to do you want to share your screen? Yes, I'm going to flip the Pro Tools. We're going to change cameras. Hopefully it'll be a smooth transition. Let's oh, it's going to be it's going to be just <laughs> fine. Here we go. All right. Look at that. Yeah. We're looking at Pro Tools. Um so Pro Tools first is what we're looking at here and it's free with all Scarlet interfaces. Uh John also dropped in a couple of splice loops there. Um stealing yep. his thunder here kind of talking about what John did before we got started. <laughs> But, uh, but John selected a couple of loops. It looks like he has uh, a drum uh, loop there as well as a bass loop. Um, but uh, what, what are we going to do with those? Uh, well, eventually we'll probably play We're going to play along to them and kind of show how you can you know, get a whole production going um, with just some cool loops. Uh, so, yeah. Very cool. Um, so what, what do we have to do to get started? All right, great. So let's uh, kind of forget about these tracks for now, our extra, our loops, and we're going to just create some tracks to record on. So we have okay. a few different examples that we're going to go through. Um, so I'm going to create tracks for each one of those. So I'm going to create five tracks, and you'll see why in a moment. All right. Sounds fun. Sounds like we're going to do some fun stuff here today. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to answer a question while you're doing that. Absolutely. Um, there is a good one here. Is the Scarlet Stolo still good for beginners in 2020? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Probably, probably better now than ever, really. Yeah, better than now than ever. It's um, in the third generation, uh, three and a half million of them sold worldwide. And it is a fantastic device uh, for beginners. Great question. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with these first three tracks. Um, so you'll see I kind of labeled them a little bit. So um, what I'm, first thing we're going to need to do on any track is you want to select your proper input. Um, I'm showing these four available right now. I'm going to be using uh, input one from my microphone, and that's all we need right now because we're going to start off just talking about the microphone. Okay. So the first things first here, if I... Let me turn down this here. Okay. So now normally you'd want to record with headphones with acoustic guitar, uh, especially these condenser microphones. They can be very sensitive. Even if your monitors are on really low, um, mm -hmm. very quickly can get feedback or, or even a um, slight phasing that you don't hear until after you record. So try to keep those, uh, those studio monitors down when you're recording. Yep. Good, good point. Thank you. So as I enable this track, um, let's see. You should probably be able to hear that coming through, I hope. Dan? I can hear it. Excellent. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and record an example. Um, this is kind of the most common way that people um, try to record sometimes, and that's going to be pointing the mic directly at the sound hole. So I'm you going to what? show you what that sounds like. Hold on one second, John. I, I went and screwed up there. Let's let's show you, uh, everybody, what that looks like. So there we go. I forgot we have an extra, uh, extra camera on John today. Oh, yeah. Um, he has his mic placed there. Um, here's his acoustic. So we're going to do an example being about pretty much directly at the sound hole okay and, uh, we'll let you hear what that sounds like so let's go ahead and uh, i'm gonna put my headphones on so i can hear my click and let's just give it a shot <clears throat> great. i'm also gonna mute my speaking mic so that doesn't mess things up for you just for a second yeah phasing pops in there all right this should be a little bit better uh, Oh, you got a little quiet there, John. I think your vocal mic might be muted. So here you go. Let's play that back for the sound hole. There we go. And you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so not too bad, but a little bit boomy. It was a bit boomy, yeah. It, sound, it sounds really nice. Um, yeah, this but, yeah. is a Taylor guitar, which are, are known for being pretty yeah. bright, um, but we can get much brighter, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So the sound hole is going to be a little bit boomy because, of course, that's where all, the, um, that's where all your sound is, is kind of coming out from. And um, if you think about it, it's generally not where you would stick your ear in front of the guitar. You know, It's a little bit unnatural right. being that close and at the sound hole. And you have to think about your microphone as, in, as your ear, right? A little bit sometimes, yeah. <laughs> What are you going to do this time? Where, where are you going to put the mic? Let me. So now I'm going to kind of go the other way a little bit. So you, so just to, so this was a little bit boomy here, being about six inches away, right on the sound hole. So what if we slide up here? A lot of people recommend going at the twelfth fret. So I'm going to go straight on at the tw at the twelfth fret, uh, basically the same amount of way, about six inches. So let's mute this mic. All right. And. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, so the funny sound. thing about going live is, Dan, do you know what I did? What'd you do? I didn't select my proper input. Oh, well, you know what? That means we get to do it again. <laughs> Sorry about so, that. Something that'll get you every time. It will, won't it? So yeah, I was looking at the, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up there. It looks like uh, the waveform for that was a little bit thin. Uh, it looks like you took it out already. But uh, I was wondering what was going to go, uh, what was going on with that. I was going to ask you. <laughs> Let's try that again. Sounds good. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, really nice. So let's play that back, and I'll alternate between the two. Uh, well, first I'll just listen to this one. We'll solo it up. So I'll let you hear that against the sound hole real quick. And back to the 12th fret. You can hear the uh, the string attack a lot clearer um, on the on the the twelfth fret there. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, it's a really nice. Now you might say it's a little thin, um, but eh. it definitely cuts through the mix a little bit more. And, it sure does. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, one one thing that I like to do, um, and you mentioned the smaller diaphragm condensers earlier. Uh, that's where I like to put the twelfth fret. Uh, I like to put a small, um, you know, like a pencil mic. They sometimes call them. Uh, on the 12th fret, um, just for that type of effect. Totally. That's really nice in the, in the stereo miking, which we're not really going to get into today, but um, that's, kind of a, that's kind of the next level from this, right, where you can kind of pick the sweet spots on the guitar and, and try to get, you know, more of them. Two or two of them, sometimes we were talking about how you can even use three or four mics. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about that. And uh, so you, you have another one that's labeled sweet spot, and I think you have uh, something secret for us there. Um, <laughs> Let's, Nothing. Uh, it's per, per, probably what you would have expected, uh, and it's just going to be kind of a little bit in the middle. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back off the mic a little bit. Okay. Uh, same kind of comments I mentioned before. Um, six inches is a little close. Okay. Uh, it might be nice for some finger picking parts, um, but if you have a if you have a good a decent sounding room, it might be good to back off a little bit. Maybe ten inches, maybe even a foot. Okay. Um, kind of the same reason I mentioned before, because, you know, we're not used to hearing a guitar from putting our ear down here. You know, exactly. <laughs> That's a little um, bit weird. Um, yeah. So so let's anyway. So we're going to back double, up a uh, little Before bit. you do that, double check your uh, your input. It looked like you might be on four for that one. Oh, good call, Dan. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so I guess Pro Tools does ascending inputs. Huh? They do. It looked like they cascaded those when, <laughs> when you did it. Always when still. you don't want them to. Yeah, right? Yeah, every time. <laughs> it's it's but, smarter than we are, and we just forget about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, so we're going to just back up a little bit, and All we're right. going to kind of just go in between. Okay. And you can also angle the mic. Here, let me just move this over so you can still hear me. So yeah, we're going to go in between. So there's my 12th fret where I was, and then my sound hole, I was probably here. So I'm going to kind of back up a little bit and try to stay in between there as much as I can. And then another trick is you can kind of angle the mic too. So you know okay. you can angle it maybe a little bit more towards the sound hole if you want okay. a little bit more of that. On this guitar, it's a big dreadnought. I'm going to try to stick it a little bit more away from the sound hole. So let's, let's just give that a shot, see what this sounds like. Sounds okay. great. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Let me mute my mic. Really nice. It, it sounded like a, uh, a combination between the two, um, kind of like you'd imagine. You know, you get halfway between the, the sound hole and the 12th fret, and, um, you know, you get, you get kind of that sound that's a little bit, uh, it's not too, um, not too boomy, but it's also not uh, too much, not too crisp. Like, you're not getting too much of that harsh uh, top end as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, when you're moving, moving a little bit further back, I find gives me a little bit more leeway because I'm one of those players who moves around a lot. So yeah. as an engineer, I, I can't stand guys like me. <laughs> so, so if you're not quite as close, you have a, you might have a little bit more leeway in doing this kind of thing uh, without totally changing the sound. But um, especially when you're going mono like this, it's not, even, it's not a bad idea. If you have somebody who can uh, you know, move the mic around a little bit for you as you're playing, um, the more you can listen for those, those, good, those sweet spots, you, um, you can kind of hear the difference. Let's let them hear the, uh, the take one more time, actually. All right, let's do that. So yeah, it sounds pretty balanced. I'll, I'll go between the three of them real quick. 
So that's the sweet spot we like. There's a 12th fret. It's a little bit more topping. So like I might like this sound more for if I have a really dense mix and I want to cut my strings to cut through a little bit. Sure. Uh, but maybe for you know a so something uh, like a solo acoustic, I might mm -hmm. prefer you know this. So let's list that sweet spot one more time. I like it because you get the um, you get the crispness of the attack um, when you're when you're strumming the strings, but you're also getting the tone that's coming from the body. Yeah, uh, I like it. Yeah, so I think that's pretty good. So just to kind of sum that up, if you can kind of do a little triangle, you got your 12th fret in your sound hole, and kind of maybe go about 10 to 12 inches out. Experiment with that. Again, your room will will kind of de kind of determine how far out you want to go. Yep. Because uh, if you have a, a echoey room kind of like this, it might be a little too much. But um, sure. But yeah, experiment with that. Don't be afraid to give a little bit of space on the mics, especially when you're in mono. You don't have to worry about phasing or anything like that. So take yeah. advantage. Yeah, that, that's the great thing about that when you're only using one mic. But um, you know, and, and I, I gotta say, I love our um, I love our chat going on right now. People are answering good questions for us, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna throw one of them up right now, which is uh, a really good question. Um, is it better to record guitar on the mic rather than recording it in the regular way? And I'm, I'm assuming the regular way is, is plugging into a DI, which we're going to do right now. Um, but yeah, one of a, a, another, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll, we'll get back to it. Well, one, one of our, 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 another one of our viewers answered that with, yep, yeah, acoustic sounds more natural with a microphone. I, I, I'll, I'll add to that with you get a little bit more control and you can change where your, your placements, just like we've been going through here. Um, so, you know, the DI is great, which John is going to show you right now, I think. Yeah, that actually is a perfect segue. So I was going to, um, so we're not going to get into the stereo mic techniques today, but I think it's really, it is worth talking about the direct sound. A lot of guitars now, is, even in the lower price points, will have some sort of pickup in it. And yep. a lot of times they can sound pretty good. Um, definitely going to be a little bit less natural sounding. Um, you know, we'll, you'll hear it in just a second, but um, certainly can have its uses. And especially if you blend it together with the mic sound, that's a sound you hear a lot of on a, a lot of records, I believe. So yeah, um, we'll kind of show you how that works. That sounds good. Let's do that. <clears throat> so I didn't have this plugged in. So I have my gain all the way down so I don't pop you guys when I plug this in here. Okay. Thank you for that. I think that worked. <clears throat> and now we can see our gain halo not doing much here yet because it's all the way down. Nice. Go ahead. But I believe this guitar. That should be pretty good. And you guys can see the gain halos there when, when John was talking and strumming. Um, those help you set your levels. And very quickly, John knows that he's not clipping just by, uh, just by looking at the front of the interface and setting his gain. Yeah, I so that. as I start, you know, I, and what you want to do is, especially the, some, a song like that I was doing with a little, you know, some heavy strumming in it, make sure when you're checking that gain, you get as loud as you're going to get. Sure. So, so you see, my mic is a, it's getting close to clipping there. If I wanted to be safe, I could back it down a tiny bit. Maybe I'll do that. That's a good idea. Just a little bit. And uh, I think we're good other than that. But uh, yeah, great point on the gain halos. Super useful, a um, little easier to see from across the room than the Pro Tools meters. Um, yeah. So yeah. So what we're going to do now, if, uh, if we don't have any more questions real quick, is I'm going to record the direct signal. Let's do that. Yeah, um, yeah we'll get to some of the other questions uh, closer to the end. And then the yes, and, then, and just for the heck of it to uh, save some time, at the same time, I'm going to record my, my, my mic signal as well. So let's label this up. Uh, mic uh sweet because so we're going to try to use that same position okay and now i'll go direct over here and i want to record these at the same time so that i can blend the two signals together um and yeah so let's give it a shot cool so you just uh choose your your inputs and then you're all set yeah yeah and i haven't sweet. really talked about monitoring but we have been monitoring through pro tools throughout this whole example so okay. that's why you'll notice um well, it's maybe hard to tell from here, but if I don't have my direct signal, if, if these are off, you weren't hearing the guitar very well, probably maybe a little bit through this microphone, but, uh, okay. but we're monitoring right through the Pro Tools software. Um, you also have the option on the, even on a Scarlett Solo of doing a direct monitoring if the mm -hmm. latency is affecting you, but uh, I'm connected here over USB and it's working great. So we're going to go with that. <clears throat> Super low latency on the Scarlett's. It's great. <laughs> 
Cool. So let's do a let's do one more track. Let's go on here. So. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. Try to remember to mute this for you. <laughs> Yep. Uh, <laughs> first, we will. Uh, you know, I should. I'm not even doing it myself, but I could have had my phone here put in mute. That would have been much easier. Uh, yeah, focus rate control does work on the phone. <laughs> we'll do it next week. Well, you're using your phone as a second camera. That's so. right. We are doing that, which is pretty cool. So I like that we have two angles here today. It's good. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So uh, let's listen to this direct signal now. I'm gonna solo that out real quick. So you can hear how it's really clean, really direct, for lack of a better word, um, yep. really tight sounding, but this may be a little bit unnatural. Um, very familiar sound from when you hear uh, guitars playing at live shows because, uh, of course, miking in that scenario is tough. But let's yeah. hear what that sounds like blended in. I'm going to fade up the microphone. Okay. And we'll play it again. Had the wrong thing faded, so let's do that one more time. All and right, let's just here we go. So there's your direct signal. Sorry about that. Man. You're all good. There it is. Third time's the charm. So you almost heard that at the end. I'm gonna play it through one more time, and we'll we'll hear it there. We had our earlier tracks playing back. We're definitely live here, folks. <laughs> here we go. Here we got a, kind of a decent mix going there. I like it. You wanna you wanna try a little bit of, a little panning on it? And, uh... I don't think that'll re that'll come through on the stream, but yeah, that's a nice trick for sure. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't come through on the stream. I think we're coming through in mono. But, um, but yes, that is a good trick when you're when you're doing the mix. You know, if you have, uh, you know, a, a couple of different acoustics, you know, put put them in different spatial um, alignments so you can listen to them in, in different spaces. Totally. Wow, that's really right, good. I, I I like the combination of the two. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, I think that's that's the way to go, especially on something like this. If we wanted to go out, if we wanted to flush it out with any more um, tracks, like I have those loops up there. Yep. So now, well, because we recorded to a click, theoretically, these uh, this should line up. I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna on any all of the drums real quick. See what yeah, happens. Yeah, that's the moment if we've not, all been we... waiting for the big reveal. <laughs> let's find out. Uh-oh, see, that didn't work that time. So that's okay. Why don't we just go ahead and record a track to the drums? How's that Let's sound? do that, yeah. That sounds good. All right, good. <clears throat> so let's just pick. I'm going to make new, two new tracks so you can see it one more time. Two tracks. And those are both yeah. mono tracks? They're both mono tracks. We'll go input one on one of them, input two on the other one. Okay. And input two is your DI? Yeah, yeah. Input two I have going in right to here. So it's not a DI because this particular guitar has a balanced output. So I'm actually using a TRS cable, which is what you'd use for like a line level signal. Yep. Um, something to be kept. It's also a really short cable we're in the studio. So I mean, not nice, but that's why I'm not I'm not using a balance a DI on this particular um, on this setup. And then also because the Scarlets do have, if you do have a regular instrument output, you have you can switch the Scarlet into instrument mode for that as well. That sounds great. 
So let's see here. <clears throat> let's get these going. Okay. Okay. And you got your soloed up on the on the drums. Yep. Uh, we'll split it in all these so I can. I don't want to make that way. We won't hear anything else. And all right, I'm gonna take this off for a second. Let's see what we got. Sounds good. <laughs> what key are we in? We are in E, and we're going to give it a shot. Here we go. All right. We got it there on the, on the groove. Let's take a listen back. Yeah, let's listen. Just add a little bass loop in there. I like it. And there you go. I think we almost have a whole song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're onto something there, John. It sounds really nice. So obviously from there, you know, we could throw on some um, some lead tracks. I know with acoustics, another thing I love to do is just go ahead and double the part another time. Okay. Um, especially when you have, um, if you're going to be using, you know, when you're mixing in stereo, it gives you a little bit more options. Then you can blend the two signals, and then you'll still have two guitar tracks to pan left and right off of each other, and it just gives you a lot of options at, at mix down. But, um, yeah. but yeah, other than that, it's... Um, um, and, and without any demo on this, are there any um, are there any plugins that you like to do, or how do you? Or I'm sorry, that you like to use, or um, is there yeah, any? Yeah, that's processing? a really that's a really great point. You know, they, um, there's a lot of good. Um, the most basics, of course, you know, EQ and compression on acoustic guitar are always uh, nice to have. You can use your EQ to, to 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 polish off some of those things if your miking technique isn't perfect. Sure. But you can hear how much you can even do with just the mic placement. Um, I EQ I'm, wise, at least. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of compression on guitars. If you're if you're compressing your acoustic, you might want you want to be very uh, very conservative with your your compression on acoustics, um, because the, uh, I mean the whole point of uh, an acoustic is the dynamic range of it. In my opinion, you know, you can you can feel free to disagree with me if you if you want. But um, and and one thing that I do like with a blend that you had there is I'll um, I'll do some filtering. Um, you know, I'll I'll do a, a high pass on the DI and I'll do a low pass on the um on the uh the the 12th or the the sweet spot that you had there and yeah that's can, a really great trick for sure y yeah because you get that nice crisp attack um or if you're using a 12th fret mic that's that's what i would do is is i would have like a three part or a four part sometimes i would use four mics for acoustics um uh, a cool trick that i learned uh was putting a mic behind the guitar player like about where their kidney is so if you think kind of the middle of the back at the side yeah the, um, over the shoulder right it gets a little bit of resonance and it, it's, you know, you, you put that really low in the mix, especially if it's an acoustic only song. Uh, it sounds really nice uh, to have that mic there. And, you know, if you have enough inputs and if you have enough uh, mics and, and gear to do it, why not try it? I mean, we're not cutting tape here. The worst thing you can do is d delete the track, you know? <laughs> Um, totally. Another quick little, uh, you just reminded me of that as far as of this, I don't, with the plugins and things, as far as experimenting with, uh, definitely the EQ is a really good trick with the direct and the, and the suite. And then sometimes you might just want to mess around with nudging one of the tracks to kind of, if you, yeah. if you feel like they're out of phase, the easiest way is you can just flip a phase button on one of the tracks that right. might help. Yep. Um, but if you find when you're doing this, if it's a little bit weird, a lot of, like I know in Pro Tools, they have time adjuster, Logic has sample delay, but you can go in and delay by samples. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed how much like a few samples can change the phase relationship between these two. Um, it's something that's kind of worth messing with, and, and, and especially with a good pair of headphones or monitors. 
yeah, and uh, and panning like we mentioned before. Uh, EQ is always great. You know, bring up the um, you know find the different um, attack levels, and you know if you do like the the boominess, uh, you know find that. Or if you have some muddy parts, cut those out. Um, you know, I, I know in my opinion, um, in my experience, um, right around 240, pretty much on most instruments, you get a, a little bit of mud. Uh, and I like to kind of scoop that out uh, when I'm when I'm doing a bit of mixing myself. Totally. Uh, the only other I mentioned is like a reverb, of course, is, is great for acoustic guitars, but especially on your direct signal, that'll help sure. take put some of the room back in. So you can try using like a room reverb. Play that for a second. It's probably a lot more than we need. It's nice. So sweet spot, maybe like around here. Just, you know, depending on what size, like a small somewhere in some room or studio room that can put back a little bit of that space that you lost with the uh, direct signal. Um, cool. Well, John, um, this has been a lot of fun and, and time goes so fast when we do these live streams. We're already, uh, we're already look like we're, we're running out of time. I'm going to scan through the questions real quick, see if there's anything I can help with. <laughs> um, not really a question here from Nicholas, but, but thank you. And, uh, you know, I've been watching in the chat here. It looks like we have people from all over the world, which is just amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, I'm just cruising through the questions. Sorry <laughs> about this. Um, uh, there's a question about drivers. Um, yeah, check on the, check on the Focusrite website. Um, if, you're, if your product is registered, just go to your page, sign in, and it'll show you the drivers that you're looking for. Um, Oh, you know, here's a good one. Is the Scarlet Solo recording bundle Gen 2 uh, still good for vocalists? Yes. Um, you know, if you have that already, yes. Uh, the When the third generation came out, it's not like the second generation, you know, went bad overnight. They're still fantastic. Even first generation uh, Scarlets are still fantastic tools. Um, something, just just start with what you have and, uh, and get recording. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, let me see. Is there any more? Oh, someone asked a, a very similar question. Um, yes, the Scarlet Solo is still perfect for beginners. Um, the SM7B, this is a question. The John, you're not using an SM7B, correct? I am. Um, yeah, no, Dan is. Um, I have, this is an SM86, like the, it's a condenser diet. It's that condenser handheld, so it's a little more sensitive. Um, but you have the SM7B, right, Dan? I do, and I'm, and, uh, and I'm speaking into a Scarlet 2i2, um, and... It has a bit of a gain boost on it. I'm using uh, um, uh, something from SE Electronics called a DM1. It's a it's an inline gain booster um, because the SM7B needs like 65 dB of gain, and um, you know not a whole lot of interfaces get up that high. Uh, but it sounds, in my opinion, sounds great with the, with this. Um, but uh, looks like we're out of time for today, so we're going to wrap things up here. Um, we talked about some really great stuff today, John. This has been a really good time. Uh, I hope everybody out there has had a great time and, um, you know, let's, uh, throw in the comments. What would you like to see next from me and John? Um, you know, let's do some, let's do something else. I think that sounds fun. Yeah. Sounds great. We can, what, what are you thinking, the... John? Maybe, um, stereo miking might be a little tough in the situation that we're in because we, with stereo miking, I think we got to get some nice close camera shots that might be a little bit tough, but you know, let's, uh, John and I will, will do a little bit of brainstorming. Yeah, maybe um, there's some other software, maybe other DAWs you'd like to see. Yeah, um, yeah, just, uh, you know. Leave us comments and we'll we'll try. Leave it. A, yeah, leave us comments. We'll check on the comments and uh, we will see you guys next time. For uh, John DiNicola, I'm Dan Hughley. And thank you guys. Have a great day.